Okay, great. Uh, we're here once again at uh, Creative Social Presents. A um, bit different tonight, we're talking after the talks. So uh, I don't know if we're more relaxed or oh, yeah. worn out. Everyone needs the beer, basically, first. Before they came to that. Yes, sir. Certainly the beers flowed before. So um, if you'd like to introduce us, uh, yourself and uh, tell us where you work and what, what your role is there. Um, so I'm Andy Catbill. I used to be a uh, creative director at RGA. I was there for three or so years. Um, I also write uh, kids' books um, with HarperCollins. Um, done about eight of those, sold uh, Head and Cause a Million. And um, I also write TV with BBC uh, and ITV and Baby Cow productions um, and I went freelance in March and um, working for lots of interesting uh, companies creating business solutions that hopefully make the world a better place. Well, you, you said loads there. Um, uh, listening to your talk tonight, that the whole point about business solutions and advertising solutions uh, really struck a chord with me. But also in what you just said about your career there, you've uh, creativity. You're, you sound like you're. You have a. Um, sorry. Just in what you said, then, your creative talents. You're able to um, vent them or exercise them in, in, a, in a variety of different ways. How have you managed to cultivate that in your in your career? What, what's been the journey? Oh well, it's been a, a very interesting journey. Uh, uh, well, a kind of um, uh, uh, lots of twists and turns. I started in. Um, I started, having come out of uh, university, I then went and did a postgrad uh, course and then went into uh, above the line advertising and then I left that after quite a short period of time and went to work for ITV and created TV shows uh, for them and then I started writing books with HarperCollins um, and then my mates kept on dragging me back into advertising um, and I sort of freelanced and did all sorts of stuff with AKQA. Uh, and then uh, and then landed uh, with RGA uh, working on various different accounts. But um, I've always, throughout uh, my career, even when I was um, at RGA, I was always still writing books and uh, working on TV projects. Um, and really, me going freelance recently was was because um, uh, the certainly the TV was starting to get uh, a little bit crazy, and it was very difficult to juggle the two careers and having gone um, having gone freelance I now feel as though I can um, I can do that much more satisfactorily. And I get a sense from you of, of your real natural creative talents. Um, I, I wonder some people who who feel they have those creative talents as well and are looking for a way to you know get a job that revolves around those creative talents without having to sell out. Is there anything you could say that, that, that would be a good advice to someone who had that concern? Well, I think the uh, I think the advertising industry, certainly the creative industry, is 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 far more exciting um, with a um, with a wide range of uh, of people uh, inside it. And I think that we, as creators, we should all be doing our own thing on the outside. Um, and certainly, when um, when I was at RGA and we were looking at new, uh, I, I ran the copy department then. When we were looking at new people joining us, new writers coming on board, one of them key things that I always looked at was, was what did they do on the outside? What, what, what did they do when they weren't um, sitting working for RGA? Were they doing really interesting things? Were they, were they interesting people who, had, who led creative lives out, out, outside RGA? Uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily writing books, but it might have been writing articles for, for, for you know, or writing blogs, or it might have been, you know, creating games, or it might have been doing all sorts of number of things. But, but you know, my career has really um, has really been all about um, lots of crazy things jumbled together, uh, and 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 that's what makes me happy. So, um, and 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 if I was employing, I'm no longer doing that. But when we were employing, I would look for people who who had a um, uh, had lots of creative industry, lots of creative ideas and interests outside agency life. And if someone, uh, you know, there's a lot of competition for jobs right now. Uh, if someone's looking to get noticed, what would someone need to do? You, know, you said you're not recruiting like people anymore in, the, in your capacity, but if not you know, no, but back in the day, if someone was looking, if you someone was looking to get noticed by you, what what would they have to be be doing? They need to stand out from the crowd. I, I'd I'd want to see people. 
when we um, at RGA, we 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 uh, we hired two guys that um, I didn't find actually. So someone else um, found them. I think it uh, was either James Temple or George Prest or someone um, uh, found them. They were a, a team who were from Google, but they were doing all sorts of crazy stuff outside um, outside uh, outside their work. They they'd created films. Um, they had created uh, all, all sorts of stuff, and they were the people that really stood out. I, I used to see so many books and so many portfolios and so many, you know, websites with all their, I, with all their ideas on it, and, and that, that's all that's all fine. But I want to see something different, and uh, and I think it's um, I think the advertising industry is a far richer place um, if it's peopled by a, a very diverse crowd of creatives. So it's people who stand out, people who do things that stand out. That, that, that always um, that always you know got noticed you know I always notice yeah. So. yeah I think um, it's so many people these days they don't actually put enough effort into standing out from the crowd so there's a there's a lot of people out there but just putting that extra bit of energy into standing out from the crowd is, is probably enough not necessarily enough I, and you, you've got to be good at what you do and I think that certainly from the from the writing point of view you know I, I, we, we certainly always looked at writers who we reckon could actually do the job. Um, having said that, it was important that they offered something else as well. And uh, I kind of almost just finally, there was a theme tonight about having balls, you know, um, you know going for it. And uh, in previous uh, CS Presents, the conversation was there's, there's not enough mavericks in the industry anymore. Um, from your perspective, you know, what kind of risks, you know, and how, how risque should people be versus like trying to grow their career and be safe? I think the mavericks and the, um, the people who are really making a difference aren't sitting in advertising agencies. They're the people outside the advertising agencies. They're the people who are, who, who are, who are um, doing their own startups. They're the people that the agencies want. H hence, you know, um, the RGA accelerator idea, which is a great idea. You know about widening, um, widening their network. You know, creating an open network of, of skills and talents. You know, uh, uh, and and getting the, those people who are out there making a difference um, and, and creating, cr creating their own shit. You know, um, uh, you know, bring them within the RGA network. You know, I think the real mavericks and the ones that are making a difference aren't sitting in agencies at this time. Right, and so just finally on that point, uh, if someone's looking to start their agency career, is that the right thing to do? Where should they start? What would be your advice? Look, it, it, it doesn't hurt by having um, some of the big agencies on your CV, frankly. You know, it, you know I understand why, why, why there is still um, an industry. I understand why there are still people that want to be inside the industry. But I really think that um, if you are out there to make a difference... Then, um, then you need to be thinking on your feet and doing something different, uh, and you know, and, and creating your own stuff that is really going to make a difference to this world. So, um, you know, I, 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 I highlighted in my talk, uh, you know, at least a couple of them um, that I think are really, you know, they're really out there. But, um, but it certainly doesn't hurt to, to, to um, in the early days to have um, to, to, to have some of the big agency names on your CV. That's great. Well, I've really enjoyed uh, talking to you, Andy, and I really enjoyed listening to you tonight as well. Uh, there was some, your name was getting tweeted about. Can, where can people follow you or, or connect with you? <laughs> um, uh, well, they can, uh, they, they, can, they can have a look on, uh, on Twitter, uh, if you like, at um, uh, Andy Cutbill. But, um, or you can buy any of the books on, uh, on, on Amazon, yeah, of course. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Um, um, and, um, and you can look out on, uh, on the BBC and ITV for, for TV shows. Um, but, um, yeah, it, you know, if you, if, you want, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and um, spout um, uh, lots of interesting rubbish, then, um, then get hold of me on Twitter and we can um, wax lyrical. Great. Thanks again, Andy. Nice to talk right, to you. Pleasure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and share it with others. Source interview people from London's creative industry so you can learn from their experiences. To see more of our videos, subscribe to the channel now. And if there's someone you'd like to see interviewed, even yourself, then tweet us, put it in the comments or get in touch via email. Thanks again.